Four tips to make SpaceX Starlink faster and more reliable. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. So good. What does it say? Pick your poison, guys. Pick your poison. It's the season. It's Samhain. It's coming right up about two weeks from now. Halloween, All Hallows Eve, whatever you want to call it. It's exciting. Exciting. I hope you're having a cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out with me. Today we'll be talking tech, photo, video, as we always do. But today we're going to be more on the tech side. We're going to be talking about Starlink. I've been doing a lot of Starlink coverage because you guys want it, so I'm giving it to you. Now, if you ever not want it anymore, let me know in the comment area and I'll just stop. <laughs> so today is going to be four tips that I've found over the last year and a half that I've been using Starlink that I think will help you getting faster service as well as better reliability when it comes to SpaceX Starlink. We know there's been a lot of shortcomings as of late and the system can only handle so many people and there is many on the waiting list. Anywhere from six months, to eight months, I've heard of people waiting two years to get SpaceX Starlink. For me personally, it took me nine months. Anyways, let's get into this, but before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you get anything out of this video, even a little bit, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work here on this channel, I would appreciate that. There's a little thank you button that YouTube gave us right under here. Click that. Or if not, even better, just become a member of the channel. That'd be fantastic. Finally, if you want more Starlink coverage, I've done a lot, probably about 80 or 90 videos so far, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, commentary, what to buy, what not to buy, why. Why is always important. Why is one of the things that I dedicate this channel to. Instead of just always telling people how to do something, if you teach them why, they can do it in their use case, let's say, not specifically to mine. And it's the same thing that I'm doing here. I'm going to tell you these tips, but I'm going to tell you why. What is the basis behind it? Because I think it's very important, right? Education is one of those things that a lot of teachers don't even get anymore. They want our kids to learn things just rote, right? Just simply, this is what you need to learn, X, Y, and Z, and then we have a test on it and that's it. They never explain why. It doesn't allow them to ask questions and get the underpinnings of things, the why of things. So anyways, let's get right into this. Tip number one, schedule important internet usage. What does that mean? Conference calls, meetings, Google meetings, live streaming. Maybe you are a Twitch streamer. Schedule it. I'll tell you why in just a second. Also, if you upload large files or you download large files, like for me, I am uploading large files because I'm providing video for you guys, right? So I need to schedule when these videos get uploaded because once again, they are big. Now, why do we need to do this? Why do we need to schedule these important internet usage events? Why? Well, Starlink simply can't handle all of the traffic that is currently getting. It can't handle the number of people that are on Starlink right now. They've expanded to a point where they're launching 50, 60 satellites sometimes a week, sometimes over 100 satellites a week, and it's still simply not enough by the hundreds of thousands of people that are signing up for it. Also, there are peak usage hours of the service. In my area, it's anywhere from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now, I don't know if that goes for everyone, but I know in my area, it'll come up on my Starlink. You are currently using the internet in peak time. So your speeds might be slightly lower than normal. My peak time, once again, is 5 to 10. Yours might be different or it might be 5 to 10 also. But this is important to notate 
so that you know between five and 10, for me, I don't wanna do any of these important things like conference calls or meetings, Google meetings, any type of meetups or anything that I'm using high speed for like video conferences and I don't want any outages or if I'm streaming to YouTube or if I was a Twitch streamer and I'm twitching a game, I don't wanna do that during this period of time, five to 10 p.m during those peak usage hours because my experience is probably not gonna be as good as it would during off time. So that's very important. Now, tip number two would be download a weather app. People are like, what the hell do I need a weather app for? Yes, you need to keep abreast to local weather events. Now, what does this mean? Well, rain greatly affects Starlink service, period. Now, I recently went through Hurricane Ian. And while I didn't sustain the eye wall, the brunt of it, here in my location, I did get anywhere from 60 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts. That was due to these mini tornadoes that were ripping through, as well as sustained winds of anywhere from 40 to 60 miles per hour, which is a lot. And Starlink handled it like a trooper. Well, it didn't blow down, but as far as the service, not so much. Basically, when the rain started and became heavier and heavier, by the time the heavy rains came in, service was out. And we had no more service. There was no more Starlink until those heavy rains diminished. So we were without service for quite some time. Now, bear in mind, satellite signals are radio waves. Now, radio waves travel easily through open air, but they become dispersed when they go through water or buildings or a forest, trees, heavy foliage, anything like that. This is why satellite signals weaken during weather conditions like rain or snow or sleet or even a severe dust storm. You're not going to get very good signal. Ideally, if you live in an area like me that gets storms every afternoon, by four o'clock till six o'clock, right around there, a storm will roll in from the East Coast, from that cooler water onto the hot land. It will start doing its thing, start churning, and all of a sudden we'll end up with a storm late in the afternoon. Understanding this, knowing this, I will not get things set up to do a live event or anything really important on the internet during those hours. So peak hours are one thing, but my weather events that happen in my location are another thing. Once again, for me, it's right around three, four, five o'clock is if we're going to get a severe storm, that's about when we're going to get it. So being cognizant of that and having that weather app to know what's going on for that day is very important. Now, tip number three. If you haven't bought one yet, you don't have one installed, you really should. If you haven't listened to any of my past videos, you should know this, but buy a managed switch. Why is that? Well, nothing is infinite, right? Data is limited and you only have a certain amount of data at any given time. And at this point, Starlink service has been slowing down a lot. As of Q2, I believe it's Ukula, that is an internet online type of speed testing site. They have found that the average from Starlink, the download average of Starlink went from 90.6 megabits per second down to 62.5 megabits per second. That's a reduction. And the up speed is also down. The up is down. Yes, the up speed is also down from 9.3 megabits per second down to 7.2 megabits per second. So basically on average, we have about let's call it 63 megabits down and let's say seven megabits up. It is a finite amount of speed, a finite amount of data. That said, if you want to make sure that you get the lion's share of the data or the person that needs the lion's share of data gets it, for example, if you work from home and you do conference calls, you do video calls, you're these video Zoom meetings, or maybe once again, you are live streaming or whatever, you wanna make sure that you get the priority or the lion's share of the access to the data. It is very important so that you don't end up with any type of interruptions. So if you need the full amount of that data at any given time, you can have it because you are prioritized over, let's say your kid that's playing Fortnite. 
And that's what a managed switch allows you to do. So within a minute or two of setting up, very, very simple. I did a video, maybe somewhere right around here. Watch that playlist. Go take a look at the playlist. There's a lot of good stuff there. Um, within a few minutes, you can set that up. So your computer gets the lion's share at any given time. And the other computers get however much you want to give to them. So it works out really well. And it allows you to, once again, data shape the amount of data that you're given. Very powerful. Tip number four, monitor local events that draw in additional travelers into your area. People that come into your area or into your cell, that location where you're operating your Starlink. For me, I have a park that is close by and around that park, there's a KOA campsite. So every time that there's a holiday or during specific times where there's big events going on at that park, what happens is all of the traffic of all the RVers and all of the campers will go to the KOA site, they will camp there and then go into the park. Now what happens of course is my data is gonna slow down because there's more people that are in this location using the service in this cell. Now, I know there's a lot of you guys out there, I can hear you now saying, Joe, you know, you're on a residential service plan, so you should not be throttled according to SpaceX Starlink. You should be getting the lion's share of that data. And while in theory, this is correct, in practice, it is not. Why? Once again, the why. The why is so important. Let's use a gallon of water as an analogy. The gallon of water, the water in that gallon represents the data. Whereas you have a whole bunch of glasses that those glasses are your customers, let's say. And we need to fill those customers' glasses with water, data. Now we know there's 128 ounces of water in a gallon. And we know that each one of these glasses have eight ounces in it and we have 16 glasses. So if we filled up each one of the glasses to the top, we would expend, let's say, that full one gallon. Well, that's great. If we have residential service and all of those glasses are residents, now we all have full data speed. Well, when there is an additional, let's say, 10 or additional 50 glasses that we need to fill, obviously there's only the amount of data of one gallon. So where does the rest come from? Now, a lot of you are gonna say, you have residential access, you should not be slowed down according to SpaceX, and that is not the case. It just doesn't work that way. Just think about it. We only have a gallon of water. We have a gallon of data and that's it. So when we have these travelers coming in and they have SpaceX Starlink RV, or they have roaming or best effort service, let's call it, what this service is, is all a limited data type of service. They will get data that is left. Well, that's all fine and all, but we have to give them something, right? And all 16 of these glasses are full with this one gallon of data. So to give a little bit of data to the other 16 or 10 or 50 that are here now at the local park or the KOA or at the campsite, let's call it the RV site, we have to give them a little bit of data. Where does it come from? It doesn't come from the ether. It comes from our data. So they scoop a little bit out of each glass to be able to give a little bit to the other glasses, right? Does that make sense to you? Once again, data just doesn't come out of the blue. We're not just pulling the data from the ether, technically, right? So we need to get it somewhere. So no matter what they say, we have to be limited. If not, they won't have the data to be able to give to the Starlink RVers, the roaming or the best effort type of people, whatever. We will not have anything to give them. So if you think about it, it's kind of nonsense when they say that you're not being throttled because you have to be. There is no two ways about it. Where is the water going to come from? Right? So once again, if you're in a cell that has a theme park or a big attraction of some kind, or let's say a KOA campsite, RV park, whatever, where there's a lot of travelers that come certain times of the year, be cognizant of those times, okay? Because at those times you will be slowed down, period. It doesn't matter what SpaceX says. There's, once again, there's no way to get this water out of the ether this data out of the ether. There is a finite amount of it. 
So I hope this has been helpful to you. Once again, giving you these four tips, but also the why behind it. I think the why is always so, so important. Now, I know there's going to be questions like, Joe, do you think things are going to get better where we're not going to have to worry about this anymore? And I hope so. I believe they will. And the reason I do believe that they will is because I foresee SpaceX's Starship being launched this year, this upcoming year in 2023, with a lot of extremely fast version two satellites that have their inner satellite lasers built into them where they could communicate from satellite to satellite. You're going to need less ground stations. There's going to be a lot less latency. There's going to be a lot more power up in the air. Think of these new satellites as being NOx or network operation centers, each one of them, in comparison to constantly relaying the data to the ground to be able to do the operational side of things. They'll be able to do a lot of that up in the air, in LEO, in low Earth orbit, and that's going to save a ton of time. Once again, most likely the milliseconds, your latency is going to go down, and I think your reliability is going to go up, and your speeds are going to become less fluctuating. That's what I think. Now, what are going to be those final speeds? I don't know. I was used to getting 250, 280, 310 megabits down and 24, 30, 40 megabits up. And now we're seeing less than 100 meg down and we're seeing less than 10 meg up. It's sad, but that's just the way it is. I've been around for quite a while now, over a year, year and a half. So anyways, I think things are going to get better. And if you are thinking about getting Starlink and you're living in a situation that you do not have fiber available to you, Starlink is definitely the best thing out there, period. Anyways, if you wanted to see a link to that managed server that I use, or if you want to watch those videos about it, once again, over here, or check out that playlist. There is a ton of good information over there. Anyways, guys, that's it. If you enjoyed it, once again, please throw this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.